was us against the world. What we were attempting to do was pay the nation's top producers better. That put me on the hate list of every other real estate company. The brokers did not like the idea of making the agents the heroes of the organization. We figured that the agent was doing all the work and taking most of the risk and yet only getting half of the compensation. High commission split was a big part of what we had going for us in the beginning. The advantage of that was that you would attract the full-time, experienced producers in the business. REMAX has always been that pioneer. We basically taught agents how to promote themselves. It was revolutionary. It was different than the way real estate had ever been done in the past. The first month, I took over 1,000 phone calls, 204 face-to-face -face interviews, and four people signed up. And the whole industry was knocking us and telling us that we were nothing but a bunch of cowboys and yahoos. And we went to the Colorado Association of Realtors convention, and so we passed out red, white, and blue pens, and it said 100% in the center, I up mine, now up yours. We weren't liked very well, let's just put it that way, but we became respected because of the fact that the numbers that we were doing, the quality of the agent, the integrity of the agents that we were bringing on, we evolved, and what happened was we coalesced around one image. We had two owners of the Remax franchise in Albuquerque, and the Albuquerque Balloon Festival was just taking off. At the same time, the regional owners had a meeting in Chicago, and we looked up at the TV, and there's the Remax Balloon. Nobody wanted it as a logo. It was just, isn't that cute, our balloons up in the air. We took a silly little symbol and turned it into this massive icon of what professional real estate is supposed to be about. The early days of the company were fraught with a lot of financial difficulties. We had to sell a franchise in order to make payroll. We had to sell another franchise in order to pay the rent. It was just a, an absolutely terrible market. In 1980, we lucked out and sold to two extraordinary business people, Frank Polsler and Walter Snyder. Of course, we were extremely impressed. They showed us the, the, best, the best of the best and we thought we could repeat that in Ontario. We thought there was a great opportunity in the marketplace for this type of brand and this type of business model. Dave looked at my financial statements. He said, uh, Frank, you're broke. I said, we'll make it work. They convinced us that they could do the job and they totally turned the company around. Frank and Walter understood franchising. They fell in love with our concept. They opened the entire European continent for us. And overnight, they revolutionized our company. In 1983, we did our first conference up in Northern Ontario. This guy flew in with his seaplane, and I said, Dave, you want to fly with us? No, no, he said, Gail, you go. The pilot made a mistake. The plane went into a stall spin, crashed into the trees. Killing the pilot and putting Gail and the other two passengers in the hospital for years. Originally, they told Dave that she would be lucky to make it through the night. Even if she does come out of it, she may be a vegetable. She may never be able to walk. She may never be able to talk. He read motivational books to her, even though she was in a coma. And the doctor said, son, she can't hear you. He said, I'm going to keep talking to her. And I'm going to sleep here. And I'm going to be with her until she gets well. When she finally went into the rehabilitation center after she got out of the coma, they said that her hopes of ever walking were not very good. And she looked at the doctor and she said, I will walk out of here. I can remember her appearing at the convention, this frail 95-pound, head-shaved wisp of a woman in a wheelchair. And she stood up in that wheelchair and waved with her other arm in a, in a sling. Um, not a dry eye in the place that she wouldn't let her take her down. And I think that that ignited all of us to work even harder and harder. By the 90s, we were booming. At our 20th anniversary, we'd reached 30,000 agents. And at that point, we really started to become a factor in the country. The agent number meant market share, meant market presence, meant advertising dollars. 
the premier best agents in the business. Best customer satisfaction, the best brand name awareness, the most market share, the best web presence. All these things are the Remax brand. The 90s were impacted by technology and Remax was in the forefront of that. We became the first real estate company to have a satellite TV network. We opened the convention at the National Association of Realtors with a huge booth, cameramen interviewing people. We made such a smash hit the first day that by the second day, 30 or 40 of our competitors all had whiteboards up in their booths that said, we too have national television coming. We had the tools to help make agents and brokers more successful than they had ever been in the past. Our national company, our regional companies, our broker owners. We are all specialists in providing products and services to help top producers become more successful. We are totally devoted to the top producer. By the time 2000 rolled around, Remax was the significant player in the real estate industry in all of North America. We went from country to country and started seeing the immediate success. We were established, we were the go-to company, we had a national presence in the media. It was inevitable we'd become number one. Remax survived the difficult markets for the same reason that, that we prospered in the very good markets. We said, batten down the hatches, this is going to be the toughest one we've ever seen. Dave being the visionary that he is realized what agents needed to do was change the focus of their business. First, we saw the unbelievable number of foreclosures and REOs coming and said, you've got to prove to bankers you can handle REOs. It's going to be the business we have. We started teaching the CDPE course and pushed the short sales. We went to Fannie, Freddie, FDIC, uh, Treasury, and HUD. We helped them rewrite the short sale rules. So we embrace the changes. If you have a company that's built with the very best brokers and the very best agents, it's going to prosper. To be affiliated with the best uh, agents, the best broker owners and managers, that's been the best 40 years of my life. There's no words to explain how much we appreciate the real estate agents and broker owners that work with us. They built this company. It was a passion for the organization. It was an absolute love for the people at Remax and we never lost our focus.